everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. In our first episode in quite some time, so we have a lot of stories to share with all of you and to catch up on. All those stories will be timestamped down below in the description for your convenience. But our first big story today, you guys saw it in the thumbnail and the title. We have a new record breaker for the highest steam level of all time. It's actually the previous record holder, but he broke his own record and he has now achieved level 2,000 on steam, spending an estimated $150,000 to get there. Was it worth it? I have no idea. I will link his profile down below and show it on screen for all of you. He goes with the steam name a stack and he actually held the previous record. I'll show you guys the top six. He is by far and away our highest steam level we will ever see. Now, why I actually talked about this, for all of you guys who are wondering why is this CSGO news related, he has over 5,000 hours on CSGO and besides that, he has a lot of money to spend on steam levels because he did break his own record and achieved 2,000 total level on steam. It was absolutely amazing to see because a while ago, we had a McSkillet post this video where he actually spent, this, this same guy spent $110,000 or around that to achieve just over 1,700 total level so estimations do say right now he's actually been spending almost $150,000 to achieve 2,000 total steam levels so that's insane to see we have a number one record holder guys the first guy to ever reach 2,000 steam level and he also was a previous record holder I'll link his profile down below for all of you guys to creep obviously one of the more rich people out there he has money to spend and he has spent $150,000 just on steam levels I can't imagine how big his friends list is but also more importantly and more CSGO related we actually had new CSGO stick release for the PGL Major actually starting next weekend. I'm so excited for that. have some great teams going there, but also some really awesome stickers I'll show you guys on screen. And on top of that, for the first time ever, we have gold autograph stickers. Now, these autograph stickers, for the time being, are only going to be in Legends and Challengers packs. So, you can only actually have gold player stickers. As of right now, we do not know if there's going to be gold team stickers because on the screen, I'll show you guys in the blog post, we had this screenshot. You can see the Cloud9 logo, a team logo in all gold as well. But at this point in time, as far as, far as I know, there are no team gold stickers out there for the time being. This could mean a pre-release or a hint at a, a future release for gold team stickers, but as of right now, if you guys do open Legends or Challengers player or autograph capsules, you have a chance of getting gold capsules for those autograph players. So it's going to be cool to see what kind of players actually ha remain their high prices. I know as of right now, we have players out there, or people out there, buying some very expensive gold stickers. I would recommend against it, but I am very excited, guys. Some very cool stickers and also new gold autograph stickers have been released. Gold team stickers, maybe in the future. Now on top of that, if we do release gold team stickers, whether or not we do, we still have the gold autographs for each and every player out there. How will this affect the souvenir market? Now many of you know, obviously when you open a souvenir package, you get gold stickers of individual players on your weapons. The only thing different now, instead you can actually post your own gold players on any weapon you want to. The only difference now will be the fact that souvenir will show up in front of the tagline. So instead of having a regular weapon, it will say a souvenir weapon. But besides that, you can now have the same gold stickers. Who knows? though what this year will actually entail if souvenir packages are still around maybe the gold stickers and those are going to be different from the gold stickers that were released we'll have to wait and see guys how this affects the market going forward for souvenir packages and there also were plenty of mistakes out there that you guys caught the community out there you just catch the slightest things the things that I would never notice and I wish I never noticed because apparently the gambit sticker was ruined a little bit on its actual crafting thank you valve for messing up that alignment there it's pretty obvious the most obvious one out there was gambits and that tweet got a lot of publicity I don't know how you guys see these things but now that you guys pointed them out I can't go and buy gambit stickers without noticing it so I'm not going to that was a pretty bad one Penta also had their alignment issues other stickers out there had had some noticeable ones but a lot less noticeable and really I don't, I don't really care about them they're not too big of changes but yes valve did seemingly mess up a few of the stickers obviously they were kind of rushing these out there to make some money maybe they just forgot about some important issues like that but not too big of a deal guys not gonna affect the sticker market there as well but on top of that I do want to talk about Thorn the struggles of Thorn so far these past few weeks obviously not at too many events in the past few months and people really taking some hate out on him of course he's always been one to cause controversy in the community and that's how he kind of retains his attention he he says things that maybe shouldn't be said and that's how he gets his attention gets his publicity out there but on top of that we've also had players and just people in general taking hate on Thorn these past few weeks and this time actually yesterday it was JW himself obviously Fnatic going out of ESL Cologne quite early and Thorn did take it out on them with this tweet on screen and then actually a whole conversation for you guys going back and forth between JW JW and Thorn, JW making some amazing points, and the community obviously choosing JW over Thorn here. It's been a long-held controversy, or not necessarily controversy, um, but m more so the community actually backing up players because players do play the game, and analysts just analyze the game, that being a common point there. And of course, JW making some references to him not being at major events these past few months, and not being uh, at some uh, bigger events, and instead going to the UK scene because it allegedly, according to Thorn, pays more. So a back-and-forth conversation there, and of course, we also had last 
last week as well. I never shared this with you guys because I was gone on vacation. We actually had a Russian interference because uh, we actually had Thorin tweet out this towards his Russian uh, fan base or Russian people out there. And then on a Russian live stream, this came out of nowhere, we had this response directed at Thorin. I'm so sorry. Uh, I will try to give to my English friends all of, from the bottom of my heart. I want to speak with them and said, fuck you, Torin. So it's very simple. And very last of today's episode of CSK News, I will be spoiling ESL Clone for all of you. So if you guys have not seen ESL Clone matchups throughout the group stages or the final results, please click away now. These will be spoilers for all of you. So first off, I do want to touch on the surprises and upsets and give you guys my thoughts and opinions on those. Of course, throughout group stages, we had one team that was not necessarily a big surprise, but certainly not expected to go 0-3, and that was Virtus Pro. Yes, Virtus Pro actually went winless throughout ESL Clone for the first time in probably many years for them. They went winless, and one of your first groups out was Virtus Pro. Alongside them, following closely was actually Team Immortals. Immortals having a great weekend last weekend for the major qualifier. One of your two Brazilian teams to qualify for the major. Not this weekend though. They actually went one and three in group stages and they were one of your few teams, your first few teams out of ESL Cologne. Now on top of that, one of your surprise teams to actually go through was Optic Gaming. Not having a solidified fifth for a long time. They're using former CLG IGL as their current IGL. That is actually Hayes on that team. They go through three and one with some notable best of one wins over teams like North and FaZe Clan was their third and final win. So some great wins for Optic Gaming as they do go through to your playoffs. And those are your big upsets so far. Virtus Pro going out so early. Immortals as well uh, going out early as well, uh, in the group stages. And Optic Gaming somehow going through as one of your four North American teams. Four of the eight teams do actually go on to playoffs were North American teams. SK, no surprise. Optic Gaming, Cloud9, and Liquid all qualifying and making out a group stage to playoffs. So it was crazy to see, you know, last weekend after a bad weekend for North American teams, only one American team qualifying for the major and two Brazilian teams, a very bad showing for all North American fans out there but this weekend the wrong weekend they actually did show up so four of your eight teams to go through were American teams although it was unfortunate because two of those teams did fall very quickly in the quarterfinals one of them being Optic Gaming they fell short to SK in a best of three series it went to map three not a very close series overall but a great showing by Optic as SK took them down two to one and it was Liquid being beat by FaZe Clan they actually were swept in their best of three but a much closer series than the scoreboard does show that went to map two and it was actually in overtime on that. So Liquid showing up very well as well. On top of that though, it was actually Cloud9 and SK to make a back-to-back -back all North American finals. It was last year, the simple Hiko lineup in a liege for Liquid and SK back in 2016 for ESL Clone. We now have back-to-back -back ESL Clone years of actually all North American finals. This year though, it was Cloud9 versus SK. And it's definitely gonna be a debate here in the next few weeks. I wanna be very curious out there what analysts say and what Thorin says about this, about Cloud9's road to the finals. Now, albeit it could be talked down because when you look at the teams they beat, they beat NIP 2-1, to one, map 3, not necessarily a close map, so Cloud9 showing up very well in both of these series, but I want to actually have your opinion. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about Cloud9's road to the finals because it could have been predicted very well that they were going to be dominated the way they were by SK because first of all, they take NIP to a best of three. NIP a team who has not shown up for several, several months. They have a newer member there on their squad that many of you guys know about. And so you don't expect a team like that to take Cloud9 to a best of three in the first place. And it was a pretty a pretty close series. Now on top of that, Cloud9 did play very well. They beat NIP. That's all you can ask for for a team. They also 2-0 Na'Vi. But keep in mind, those maps were very close as well against a Nottis Venseer team that has not done too much in the last eight months themselves. Yes, Na'Vi is a great team with a great lineup, but they have very, very little success in the past six to eight months themselves. And although that 2-0 sweep looks very nice, it was 16-14, 16-13, very close maps and again you couldn't ask more from Cloud9 but I can definitely see it being debated by people out there that Cloud9's road to the finals was very easy and prepared them in the wrong way for an SK who dominated the best of five finals and there was no doubt in my mind and probably many of your guys' minds that SK was the better team throughout the entirety of that series. Now we could argue as well though that SK had an easy route as well they drew Optic in the first round so definitely debatable there of course though they did 2-0 FaZe Clan in their, in their semifinals FaZe Clan definitely a top tier team out there and SK took them handedly and that goes on to show you the history of this actually if I'm if I'm correct here correct me if I'm wrong guys I believe in tournament history FaZe Clan has never beat SK in a best of three series so that actual streak does continue and SK did take down Cloud9 in the finals here in dominating fashion but although nonetheless a great performance out of Cloud9 I want you guys to leave a comment down below what do you guys think about Cloud9's road to the finals so that's gonna do it for today's episode of CSK News I will see you all hopefully tomorrow or sometime soon or later this week guys hope you all 
enjoyed. If you guys did, please remember, live, love, laugh a lot. Remember, I like you. I will see you all next time. Remember, like.